Have you ever wondered about the mise en table, like how are you supposed to remember it? That's the aim of today's video, to help you to decode any random combination of quarks and decipher what mise en they actually create. First then, let's review the quarks table. The great beauty of this, of course, is that it's on the formula sheet. Even so, we should whiz over it. You need to know about three types of quark, the up, the down and the strange. All three of these quarks have a baryon number of plus one third. The up quark has a positive charge of plus two thirds E and both the D and S quarks have a negative charge of one third E. The up and the down both have a zero strangeness, whereas the strange particle, oddly perhaps, has a strangeness of minus one. For the antiquarks, all the signs change, just like you'd expect. The meson chart is meant to show the relationships between the meson. Once you get these relationships, it's actually quite a simple thing. You can think of it as being like a kind of graph, and like all graphs, there's going to be some axes. In the upward direction, we have strangeness. This moves from minus one through zero to plus one. So really, it's just like any y-axis graph. In the horizontal direction, as we move left to right, the particles are becoming more negative. In a way, it's a bit like current flowing from plus to minus. There are three simple meson rules that we can apply. The first of these is that all mesons are made of a quark and an anti-quark pair. The second is that all mesons have a baryon number of zero. And as far as we're concerned, for our third rule, we can say that all pi mesons have no strangeness. Let's take a look at some combinations of quarks to see if we can work out what particles they are. Let's start with a U and an anti-S. We're looking at the U, this will have a charge of plus two thirds, whilst the anti-S will have a charge of plus one third, making the total plus one. This means that our particle will only be a K plus or a Pi plus. The U, however, has a strangeness of zero and the anti-S has a strangeness of plus one. This means that it must be a K plus since pions are in the middle line and have a strangeness of zero. What about the D and TU? Well, for this, the charge on the D will be minus one third and the charge on the anti U will be minus two thirds, altogether making a charge of minus one, which means that our particle is either a K minus or a Pi minus. Neither quark is strange, so the strangeness of our particle is it will be zero which means that this must be a pi minus. What about an S anti D? Well, this will have a strangeness of minus one since the D and the anti D don't have any strangeness. And the charge will be minus one third plus one third, i.e. zero. So this is a K zero, but hang on, there are two of these. There's the K zero and the anti K zero. So you just have to remember that this is the anti K zero. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of which combinations of quarks add up to which particle.